The winter of 1893 was one of the coldest ever recorded across the northern frontier. Livestock froze standing, homesteaders abandoned cabins they spent years building, and in a valley near the Canadian border, a man named Elias Turner walked into his dugout home each morning and found something that sounded impossible. While the world outside sat at minus 20 degrees, the air inside his shelter hovered near a comfortable 50 degrees, not from a stove, not from a fire, and not from any device that burned fuel. His neighbors swore it had to be illegal witchcraft, or at least something he was hiding. But Elias kept his secret for years. He had built what he called the underground air tempering tube. No one in his region had ever heard of such a thing, but similar systems actually appear throughout history. In ancient Persia's Yakshals and Roman bathhouse, hypercost tunnels in medieval root cellars and in early frontier food rooms that stayed frost-free all winter. Elias, however, was the first in his remote settlement to merge all these ideas into a single survival hack. The story began the previous summer, when Elias noticed something strange in his root cellar. While outdoor air climbed to 90 degrees, the air drifting through the cracks in the cellar walls stayed around 50 to 55 degrees. The earth was regulating it. Soil, even a few feet deep, sits at a stable year-round temperature. Frontier families knew this for food storage, but Elias wondered, what if you could use that same principle to warm winter air? Most settlers only thought of cooling food, not conditioning their living air supply. Elias sketched an idea. A long tunnel, buried around six feet beneath the ground, drawing freezing outside air through the earth before it entered the house. He believed the soil's stable temperature would temper the air, meaning it would warm up significantly. The idea wasn't magic, it was physics. But frontier neighbors called it nonsense. You can't warm air without fire, they argued. If it worked, the army engineers would be doing it. Still, Elias dug a trench more than 40 feet long at the downhill end. He formed a small intake tower made of scrap boards and stones. At the house end, he cut a hole into his dugout and connected the tunnel. Throughout the fall, he packed the trench with tightly compacted dirt, leaving the pipe fully encased in the earth. Then the freeze came. The first test arrived on a bitter morning, minus 20 outside, cruel wind shredding the valley. But inside Ilias's shelter, something unbelievable occurred. Air flowed in steadily at around 48 to 52 degrees. Not warm like a stove, but warm enough to make survival not only possible, but comfortable. Word spread fast. Visitors stepped into his dugout felt the temperature, and immediately accused him of hiding a stove or some illegal contraption. Some claimed he had tapped into a hot spring, others insisted he was secretly burning coal. But Elias showed them the truth. No stove, no chimney smoke, nothing but a buried pipe. Too many frontier families, this discovery felt like breaking the rules of nature itself. You weren't supposed to get heat without fuel. You weren't supposed to bend winter air to your will. Yet the science had been known for centuries in other parts of the world. Elias had simply rediscovered it, alone in the cold, guided only by observation and stubborn curiosity. Once news of Elias's underground air hack spread through nearby settlements, skeptics demanded proof. They wanted numbers, measurements, and physical evidence. Elias welcomed it. He understood that his system wasn't magic. It was an application of geological thermodynamics combined with frontier ingenuity, and it had clear historical precedent. Local farmers brought thermometers. They recorded the outdoor air at minus 18 to minus 22 degrees, then they measured the air coming out of Elias's underground tube, consistently between 47 and 52 degrees, a temperature rise of nearly 70 degrees without a single spark of fire. The mechanics were simple, though misunderstood. Six feet below the surface, the earth maintains a stable temperature, typically 48 to 55 degrees depending on location. When freezing outside air is pulled through a long underground path, it gradually absorbs that stored heat from the soil. Romans used the same principle for bathhouses. Medieval monks used similar tunnels to protect manuscripts and food stores. Even indigenous tribes in colder climates designed semi-subterranean lodges with carefully routed ventilation shafts that moderated airflow. Ilias's tube, made from salvaged metal and later upgraded to clay tiles, allowed cold air to slow down and equalize with the temperature of the earth. Settlers believed cold air stayed cold forever, but in truth, air is extremely responsive. It absorbs heat rapidly when exposed to a warmer mass. Ilias had created a basic ground-to-air heat exchanger, long before the term existed. But what impressed visitors most wasn't the science, it was the consistency. Frontier cabins often lost heat quickly, requiring constant firewood. Elias, however, used half the wood of anyone else, because his incoming air entered at 50 degrees instead of minus 20. His small stove could maintain comfortable temperatures with minimal effort. It was like the earth itself provided a preheating system. As winter progressed, the community's attitude shifted. The same neighbors who once called his tube illegal now asked for help building their own. But Elias wasn't protective. He shared instructions openly. Dig deep, run long, slope the tube downward from the intake to the shelter, and place a mesh cover to block rodents. Many copied it. A few succeeded. Others failed because they skipped key steps or used too short tunnels. 
Researchers today can track similar systems through various cultures. The Persians used canats and icehouse tunnels to cool and temper air. Early European settlers in the Great Plains built subterranean passages to equalize humidity and temperature. Even military engineers in the 1800s used buried ventilation pipes to protect ammunition bunkers from freezing. Ilias's design wasn't a miracle, it was a forgotten branch of historical engineering. Yet the most controversial part was psychological. People believed heat came from fire, not soil. The idea that Earth itself could warm air felt unnatural, even illegal. In some regions, church leaders discouraged the idea, calling it meddling with God's order of seasons. Elias ignored them. He trusted results, not superstition. By late winter the settlement faced a brutal cold wave. Several cabins reached indoor temperatures near freezing, even with stoves running full. In contrast, Ilias's dugout never dropped below 46 degrees. Visitors walking inside described the sensation as entering a pocket of spring. Newspapers from nearby towns even reported on the strangely warm homestead. The underground air hack had proven itself what began as a curiosity became a survival tool. It demonstrated that the frontier didn't always need more firewood or bigger stoves, sometimes it needed forgotten ideas buried in both earth and history. As temperatures warmed and spring arrived, Ilias's underground tube became the subject of regional fascination. Engineers, homesteaders and fur traders all visited to document the system. Some wrote about it in early agricultural journals. A few historical records from the late 1800s reference these tests, describing it as an earth-tempered air apparatus. But while settlers were trying to understand how Elias had built his system, he was already refining it. He realized that airflow depended heavily on pressure differences. On windy days, the tube delivered stronger, warmer air. On still days, airflow slowed, so he experimented with adding a small wind hood at the intake, based on old sketches he'd once seen in a French farming pamphlet. The hood captured even weak wind currents and increased the pressure pushing air through the tube. His second improvement was drainage. Some settlers who copied his system found that condensation formed inside shorter tunnels. Freezing and blocking airflow, Elias countered this by slightly tilting the pipe so water naturally ran back out the intake end. This detail matched medieval monastic air tunnels, which were always sloped to prevent water stagnation. Again, Elias reinvented principles that history had already solved. His third refinement involved filtration, dust, insects and small animals could enter the intake. Elias added a double mesh and a removable wooden baffle that forced air to change direction, dropping debris before the air traveled underground. This structure resembled early European root cellar air traps. These upgrades made his system reliable, consistent, and almost maintenance-free by the following winter. A dozen families had implemented variations of the underground air hack. Reports emerged of cabins that stayed 15 to 25 degrees warmer than expected. Not as effective as Ilias's perfect 40-foot design, but still a significant improvement. Some newspaper writers called it the frontier heater with no flame. But as with many innovations, interests faded as technologies changed. By the early 1900s, steel stoves grew cheaper, coal became more accessible, and rural electrification projects began lighting the frontiers. The buried air tube quietly disappeared from mainstream knowledge. Only archaeologists, agricultural historians and a few off-grid homesteaders remembered the method. However, the physics never changed. Even today, earth tubes and ground-to-air heat exchanges remain part of passive home design. Modern engineers use them to reduce heating costs. Sustainable builders praise them for energy savings. And yet, when someone first hears about them, they often react the same way Elias's neighbors did in 1893. Disbelief. The idea still feels illegal, as if nature allows only fire to warm air. Dot Elias Turner never patented his idea. He wasn't trying to invent something revolutionary. He was simply a settler trying to survive a brutal winter. His hack worked because he observed environmental patterns, applied historical clues, and trusted simple physics. What seemed like frontier magic was actually ancient engineering rediscovered. In his later years, Elias reflected on the winter that made him local legend. He said that the world only feels cold when people forget how to work with nature rather than against it. His underground tube was proof. Beneath the frozen surface, the earth still held warmth. All he did was build a doorway to it. And that is why his underground air hack wasn't illegal. It was inevitable.